Okay. So now what we're going to do is the sticks. So you have, I want to say, seven sticks in your kit. If they, you know, a couple of them snapped off, that's okay because you're just going to be basically gluing them in. I did my best. I wrapped them up, but again, like, not much I can do with the post office. So I am going to go ahead and play around. See where I like it. I like that back there and then I'll of course snap it off at the top because that's a little bit long and you just kind of play around putting your sticks in where you see fit I'm going to break that. Some of them you might not have to hot glue. Some of them might be able to poke into the foam. Nope. Yep. Yeah, I'm going to have to hot glue it. They're pretty thin. And yeah, just play around. I mean, you don't even have to add the sticks if you don't want to. I just thought it looked super cute. I like that there. So that's really all I did is just play around lifting stuff up, putting stuff down. Moving it around to get the look I was going for. That guy wants to move on me. Not enough glue. There we go. So, these are natural sticks that I found from my girlfriend. The one I used in the original was plastic and I painted them with the truffle chalk paint by Waverly because they were shiny and I didn't like that but I didn't have enough for everybody and she had these out front her house ready to be picked up by the city and I thought oh my goodness that is perfect that would work perfect for the class because what I did before that is every time my kids and I went on a walk, which I would take them on walks multiple times a day. That was one of our fun activities. And I would pick up small sticks as we were walking. Oh, here's my one of my kitties. This is the kitty that was outside meow and he's not really a kitten anymore. He's a big boy now. August 5th is when we, when I found him. He likes to jump on my back because I stand while I craft. And he likes to jump on my back and climb up. And this guy came out. Okay, Luca, come on. So yeah, he usually does pretty good not clawing me, but not always. And he keeps looking at me like he's about to jump. He was just clawing at my back. I'm like, oh boy, not right now. So yeah. I'm just going to play around, put my sticks in, and then I will be right back. Okay, so what I did was made a messy bowl. All you do is you pick your fabrics you want, your ribbon, whatever. Come on, Luca. 
and excuse me you're just gonna crisscross it use something to tie it and I'm gonna weasel it up under here like that so I'm gonna take my hot glue and I like to offset it so it's not in the center Sorry, I have a cough drop in my mouth. Yes, Luca, I love you too. And now he's on my shoulder. Okay. So this is what we have so far. Then you're going to take your raffia ribbon, or your, not ribbon, but your raffia. And we're going to just make a bow. You can do this now. Actually, what we're going to do is make our beaded hanger. What am I talking about? Sorry about that. Let me get my beads out, and I'll be right back. Okay. So we've got our beads. And our twine. So all I do is I, I'm going to make a knot here. Nope, I'm sorry. Go ahead and put some hot glue or you could put tape around because you want to make it easier to get it through these holes. Ugh. Oh, I lost a bead. That's okay. So go ahead, put it through the hole. Now I'm going to go ahead and tie a knot. <laughs> so I'm going to go ahead and tie it three times. The first knot I made, I doubled it up. Sorry about my cat. Okay. Test it, make sure it doesn't come through. Put some pressure on it. It's not, so I'm going to go ahead and snip it. So that little tail is off. Okay. Now you're going to take your other end and again put either tape or hot glue. Luca. And we're just going to string our beads on. So I'll go ahead and string these on and I'll be right back. Okay. I got my beads on there. So now this, we're just going to take this end, put it through the hole. Sorry, my cat. Pull it. Now you're going to, again, knot it. I'm sorry, my Put that noise, my cat is trying to get in the window, which he can't because of the way my desk is set up. There's like a little shelf that came with the desk. And he always tries he has knocked a bunch of stuff over before. And he just tried again. I am so sorry, guys.
My head might get in the way. Oh, jeez. Luca. I'm so sorry, guys. My other cat, she's an indoor-outdoor cat. And she usually keeps him in his place, but she is outside. Let me try to... This is the tricky part. Without getting my head in the way here. There we go. One more. Excuse me. There we go. Slip that up. Now what I did with the other one was, hang on, let me get this out of here. <laughs> oh, excuse me. I kind of just put a little bit of glue right by that hole. Just to keep that twine in place. And especially if your knot isn't as tight, this will help. My first one. Took me several attempts to get this tied correctly. I have glue strings, which I'll fix later, but this is where we're at so far. Then we're going to take the raffia. And I believe I gave four strands. If it's three, that's okay, too. But I believe it was four. <laughs> Excuse me. So what I do is I give myself, I don't know, six inches. Make sure you can see me. And I just make my bow. Make it get a little smaller. I'm so sorry, this cat. <laughs> I'm so sorry, guys. He doesn't understand I'm trying to make a video. Okay. Let's make it a little smaller. So there's my one bow. So I'm going to kind of make a diagonal on here so that it doesn't pull apart. And I'm going to put it right at the top where it lines up with this bead strand. Then I'm going to decide how long I want my tail. Up there, grab this one, 
Okay, now I'm going to take my rest of my raffia. Same thing. Now instead of doing a forward, like you tie your shoe, you're going to go behind instead of forward when you're tying this. You can do it the regular, like you're tying your shoe way too. But this way, the tail just, to me, looks a little better. Because if you see, this would be the regular side. This is in the front. I mean, there's always one in the front, but it just looks a little different. Tie yourself, you know, two different bows where you tie in the front and the back, and you'll kind of see what I'm talking about. I try to make sure they're even. Again, I do a, a line of glue so it comes over on this loop part in here so that the glue, glue excuse me, will keep that bow in place. Okay. Again, come trim my tails. And then I like to kind of separate these I'll worry about that later so then you can take your remainder might be a little tricky you can use ribbon or if you have another strand of raffia you could use that what am I doing wrong here Now what I'm going to do with this one, before I glue it down, I'm going to try to open that up a little bit, because from tying it, they scrunch together. It's not going to be perfect, but some is good. Take my finger, kind of form it. Go on this side. And do the same thing. Probably can't go all the way down, as you can see. Like mine, I can't go all the way down. That's okay. Get what I'm trying to say. Kind of form it with my thumbs. Okay. I'm going to try to make that a little bit even. And then what I'm going to do is glue this at the bottom of my pumpkin. Just 
just like that. Clean up my mess. Now these strands that we cut off, these longer ones I keep because a lot of times I like to stick raffia behind stuff. And there's no use in throwing away these strands because you could also, I mean, look at this. You could tie something around it, add to your bow, trim it down. I like to save that. So, there we have it. Our pumpkin, floral pumpkin hanger. If you guys have any questions, um, feel free to message me if you need me to explain anything to you live I can do that too and I um, hope you guys enjoyed this and I will see you in the next class bye